Back. Now, Spain is calling for help from the European Union to control one of Europe's most southern borders. In recent weeks, hundreds of migrants from sub-Saharan Africa have scaled the border fence, separating the Spanish territory of Melilla with neighbouring Morocco. Thousands more migrants live in the hills near Melilla, from where our Spain correspondent Tom Burridge reports. Welcome, welcome. A home in a wood. In the mountains of North Africa, where they wait. Hungry and desperate to enter a tiny piece of Europe, which they can see down below. Lenny Otte has been living in the forest for four years. So 11 of you live in here? Yeah. He travelled all the way from Cameroon, but now he's trapped an illegal immigrant in Morocco, hiding from the police. I'm a prisoner because I can't go in the street. I can't just walk in the street, they can catch me at any time. So I'm a prisoner because I don't have any liberty. So I, that's why I decided to come in the forest to live. This is my bunker. And there are thousands living here. An unwelcome community within touching distance of their ultimate goal, Europe. For the migrants, the mountain of uh, Gogo's mountain is the hell, and Melia is the Babylon for them. But this is what stands in their way. On this side of the border fence, which stretches for 11 and a half kilometers around Melia, we're in Spain, Europe. On the other side is Morocco, Africa. The tallest of the three fences is eight meters high, but the migrants have developed tactics and techniques which have proved very effective. In recent weeks, Hundreds at a time have scaled the fence, filmed by the police who call it a human avalanche. Spain is spending more on policing its border, but the Spanish government's representative in Melilla. Es que la frontera de Melilla con Marruecos es la frontera, es una de las fronteras sur de la Unión Europea. Says the European Union needs to take action to help the country control one of Europe's most southern borders. For those that cross, there's little work, but there is somewhere to sleep, Melilla's overcrowded immigration centre. Life in Melilla is not all that easy, you know. It's very difficult, no work, nothing to sustain for living over here in Melilla. We are just been like beggars. Some told me they dream of life in Britain, but the authorities here plan to send most back to the country where their journey began. <laughs> Malia manages tens of thousands of crossings from Morocco every day. But it's now calling on its European partners for help to stop those on the mountain who are planning their illegal attempt to enter Europe and Spain. Tom Burridge, BBC News, in Melilla. Well, Dr Nando Segona is with the Institute for Research into Superdiversity at the University of Birmingham. He's also the Associate Editor of Migration Studies and he joins me on the line uh, from Oxford. Welcome to you. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Isn't this a problem where there is no solution? I agree on the second part. There is no solution because the need to migrate, to move and to look for better opportunities in life is not going to disappear if you build a higher uh, wall or a fence that is 10 meters or 50 meters. In a way, this seems to be that uh, the European Union and Spain are only addressing a, a marginal aspect of the, of the issue at, uh, here, which is the need for people to find security and livelihood. But uh, I guess the European Union and Spain would say, well, it's not our job to create employment in sub-Saharan Africa so that people are happy to stay where they are. Well, as you, as you know, among the people that uh, migrate towards Europe, there are people that are seeking asylum, people in need of humanitarian protection. It's not uh, just by chance that the large majority of the people that are in, uh, in Lampedusa or arrive in Spain come from countries like Syria or Nigeria. Uh, it, it's basically almost a snapshot of uh, the geopolitical situation in, in Africa, in which the, the European Union and uh, the Western countries are not just uh, um, passive viewers, but also involved in many ways, just and not, I mean, I'm not just mentioning uh, the, the present, but also previous uh, colonial links and economic relationship that have been built over decades. 
So in a way there are expectations also from the point of view of the migrants to be able to rejoin relatives and families that already, already live in European Union territories, but also somehow a sort of a, um, more uh, strong economic and also emotional links with the countries that were former colonial powers. Um, so what should the European Union or Spain or Italy be doing that they're currently not doing now? I think there are a number of issues. The first one is to ensure that the, um, the protection of uh, refugees, it doesn't only happen in the country of origin, but Europe should be more welcoming for people that are escaping from persecution. At the moment, this is not happening. Uh, Europe, uh, the EU in particular, is putting a lot of resources into um, uh, helping, for example, Syri Syrian refugees in the region, but if you look at the numbers, they are so small, that so tiny, that it's almost ridiculous the kind of support that they are giving within the territory of the European Union. On the other end, another issue that is really important is the creation of opportunities for legal migration towards the European Union. We know that in the past, for example, Spain had a very important um, a temporary scheme, seasonal schemes, where they were getting uh, migrants from Morocco and the, south the, the southern uh, parts of, uh, of, of Africa to work into the agriculture for short terms and then people were going to be able to go back to their countries and these schemes have been significantly reduced in the last few years. There is also obviously the issue of the economic crisis, there is the food crisis in a number of these countries uh, where the people that come from. So it, it's a very um, fluid and unstable situation, that insecure situation we are looking uh, at the moment and Europe should be more welcome. This is not uh, a view that is also shared by people like the EU Commissioner for Home Affairs that said sure. that it, yeah. But, but, but EU governments, they have to face their electorate. Immigration is a source of enormous concern. You know, the politicians are going to turn around and say, well, it's all very well saying we ought to be, you know, you're not going to win an election going in and saying, yeah, you know what, our manifesto commitment is we're going to let more people in. You, you, certainly, you are right to an extent, but you have to think about that the people that come to work in the in EU, they work for firms and factories that are mostly owned by uh, EU citizens that actually make a profit out of the work of, this, of these people. It's not also only a, a something about generosity or uh, moral superiority here. It is an economic, an economic okay. relation there. All right, Dr. Nando, Nando Sigena, grateful to you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, to talk to you and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Now, it's not exactly what you'd call ID.